What's up thrifters? It's been a big week in menswear. We've got changes at Gucci, we've got Raf's in men's clothing, we've got an iconic tailor returning to Savile Row. Let's get stuck into it. Okay, first up, the sad news that Raf Simmons is closing his eponymous brand. The Spring Summer 23 collection was the last one ever to be made. After 23 years, it's quite sad. I was actually just in the hunt for a Raf Simmons suit, pre-owned, and as soon as news came out, it gone. So I'm pretty bummed about that. Raf's still gonna be continuing his work at Prada. Fashion world hasn't lost his talent completely. However, uh, it is it's sad to see that go. And there's been a lot of shake up recently in menswear. It's interesting to see the catalyst for this, whether it's the financial markets going on right now, or that where people are getting a little bit nervy, where, where the purse strings seem to be pulled super tight. Um, and people just need to be aware that we may be going into a very difficult situation soon. The other news is the creative director of Gucci, Alessandro Di Michele, has left after almost seven years. Um, whatever you thought about his style, it certainly was unique. He certainly changed things quite drastically for Gucci in terms of their aesthetic and their whole vibe. Um, personally, whilst I really liked some of it, I liked, I, aesthetically, I think it's fantastic. I think some of the Wes Anderson y vibes of it were really interesting but I don't think it was as wearable for me um, as it, it, that I would like personally it's just me but I'm more of a formal dresser someone that doesn't like to go too wild with colors and things so there's definitely elements we liked we even had a blazer in store which I absolutely loved uh, just the whole thing just didn't seem practical to me he definitely left his mark alongside the sort of Tom Fords of the world, who's, I'm a Tom Ford acolyte, so this is, it's very different from the very sexy Tom Ford to the playful and still sexy, but just in a different way. So, and it, that definitely does feel more to the modern palette, but who knows where we're gonna go next. So it'd be really interesting to see. And I'm not against changing things up. It's nice to see that change was from, say, the Gucci, from the Tom Ford Gucci to, to Di Michele's, to whoever's next. So it'd be interesting to see. Okay, next in sustainable news, we're a pre-owned sustainable company. So let's talk about that. Um, I feel like I should bang on about sustainability more. It's just I don't want to be, um, I don't want to make people feel bad for choices. That, I, But I do feel like we need to educate ourselves more and need to think about these things more. Uh, well, anyway, next up, H&M is facing a new lawsuit after misleading the markets with their conscious collection. Basically, they've been saying and marketing themselves as way more sustainable and using materials that are way more green than they actually are. I, for one, am truly shocked. This isn't the first lawsuit they've been slapped with. They're not the only ones, uh, but we need to make this more known to people. Almost every brand has their own conscious line or their own green line. It's greenwashing, pure, pure and simple. So Omega just launched a 60 years of James Bond anniversary watch which uh, I'm kind of into. It's got basically, for me, it looks like just two elements. The No Time To Die watch with the Milanese bracelet, which I'm a huge fan of, and then the original 300 uh, golden eye sort of watch. Mixed together, darker hue of blue, very simple. Still got the helium valve, which I know a lot of people are unsure about or dead against, but I'm a big fan of this. This is really nice. I'm not a particular lover of branded things. Like, I don't know if it, this doesn't look to have bond on the face but it does on the back which is good so the dial is pretty clean which is, I'm okay with it's just if it's when it's got bond or the, the bezel the, what's it called the smoking gun thing um, I'm not a big lover of but this is just on the back so it's just a bit of fun yeah I'm a big I'm a fan of it um, and it's not particularly something I would necessarily buy new I know the no time to die watches were in the region of about eight to ten thousand pounds last time I checked so significant wedge uh, and if I had to choose between the two, between this one, I'd go for the No Time to Die one. The original Omega Bonds 3, the GoldenEye ones, normally go between £2,000 sort of thing. We've had a couple in store. Iconic watches. My first ever watch was a small one of them, and I, I just love it. And this is pretty exciting news. So Edward Sexton, legend of the game in terms of tailoring, working with Tommy Nutter, big shoulders, big lapels, Savile Row, He's, he's, a, he's the godfather of, of Savile Row. It looks like they've tried to 
make a contemporary store rather than a traditional tailor's. They say they're focused on a very masculine and British look, but also make it a little bit more fun. So you can see that with some of the photos of colors, there's some like oranges and browns in there. Um, still got the big uh, lapels, still got the strong shoulders, but maybe not so much. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna try and head down there and have a look. Edward's section is synonymous with the row, so it's just, it just needs to be there. And that's it with the news for this week. Check out the store, Archie and Woods, we've had loads of new drops and we'll have some more coming soon, actually. A couple more Drake's pieces, Tom Sweeney piece. Um, this Drake's blazer is in store too. Any questions, let us know, it's archieandwoods.com. Please like and subscribe, because it helps us to grow the channel and grow the store. And it helps me make more videos and provide more options for the store as well. Um, just some great value. Um, mostly tailoring, but also other items as well. Please drop a comment if you have any suggestions for brands. And um, yeah, look forward to it.